Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel where today I don't have soft pink Muppet hands on yet. Uh, so today we're going to do something a little bit different. I have here the pen for my tablet. It is a Huion, H-U-I-O-N tablet. Um, I got it during, I think, a Black Friday sale. It was like $70. It's a very nice tablet, but the problem is digital art is incredibly difficult for me to do physically. So what we're gonna do today is try to make that less of a problem. Uh, you have all met my Muppet hands, which are here. <laughs> um, and the reason that I use these is because I have fibromyalgia. Now what that means is that my body is uh, tensing all the time for no reason. Uh, well, there's reasons, but I'm not gonna get into that right now. <laughs> um, but uh, I am sore, always. Everything in my body is always a little bit sore. So I have a lot of things that aid with that. I have these, I take a lot of vitamins that my doctor recommended for inflammation. Um, and it means that doing repetitive motions with my hands, like drawing, can be very taxing, which is why pretty much every pen you see me use on this channel has some kind of um, pencil grip on it. I have it on the fine liner that I use, it's not a fine liner, my brush pen that I use the most. Um, I rely very heavily on things like this to make art accessible for me. This is also a very lightweight drawing tool, so this is not strenuous to use for long periods of time as long as I have my gloves on. But, for whatever reason, I have a harder time with tablet pens. I think part of that is that I needed to have a tighter grip on it than I do with a real pen to avoid getting jittery lines. Even with line stabilizers, they can only do so much. Uh, I still need to, you know, be confident and decisive with my lines. So after a while of use, this gets very painful. And by a while, I mean, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes is the most I can do with a tablet pen. With real art supplies, or rather analog art supplies, um, I can get around this with like pencil grips and things like that. But obviously this is a weird round barrel. They don't make grips for these as far as I'm aware. And also I don't wanna cover the buttons because I do use these to switch between brushes and things like that. So today I thought, why don't we try to make our own? And with our friends over at the Crayola factory, we're gonna do just that. <laughs> this is a very nasty set of watercolors that I got for my niece to play with when she visits. Um, I say nasty in the fact that they are a mess, not that they are bad. I actually really enjoy using washable Crayola watercolors. I think they're very fun. Um, and we have here a bit of model magic. So I'm going to use some pigment from the watercolors to make this pink. I'm gonna knead it, and then I'm gonna put it on here and try to mold it to the shape of my hand when I draw. And uh, then we're gonna come back in a day or so and see if the pencil grip makes it any easier for me to do digital art. So let's go. So I ended up speeding this up like a ton because I ended up having to knead this for 10 minutes to get the amount of red pigment in there that I wanted. Um, and this could have been avoided by dyeing it with a marker or buying red model magic and mixing that with the white or just mixing less of it. So, you know, tips for the future because that ended up hurting my hands. Um, and as you can see here, I'm realizing I had way too much, so I cut it in half. And I think I end up cutting it in half a third time to get the correct amount. It also was really soft, so I let it sit and dry for a while um, just to get it a little harder. For a while, but I mean like five minutes because uh, I had warmed it up too much. So here's me molding the actual shape that we're going to end up using to the pen. I am not following any kind of guide. I'm just kind of winging it. And then I put my hand in it in the position where I hold it and then I let it sit there for a minute to mold to the shape of my fingers. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. I have let this harden, it feels pretty good. So we're going to take this on a field test. Let's go to my computer. So as you can see, I have some very good reference images here of guys playing air guitar. And our subject today is going to be Gideon Nav from the book Gideon the Ninth, or the Locked Tomb Trilogy. Um, which my wife has been reading to me. I can read. Um, I just want to make that clear. But anyway, <laughs> my wife has been reading it to us and uh, we have been enjoying her character a lot. Um, she reminds me of my favorite D&D character, Regan, who I drew on this channel for the Stort Semple review. She even looks like her and I'm obsessed with her. So I wanted to draw her. Um, she is a swords woman and I wanted to draw her playing air guitar even though she canonically has not done so yet 
but perhaps she will. I have more books to go, and if she doesn't do this at any point, I will be very disappointed. <laughs> so um, that is our subject for today's drawing. I wanted to keep it relatively simple, so both a character design that I was comfortable with and, you know, she looks kind of like Reagan, so I was like, yeah, that's easy enough, I can do that and just a character picture, nothing with like a background or anything because I didn't want to hurt myself. So my first impression of my, my new tool, my little pencil grip that I made for the tablet was that it was working okay. Um, this first sketching session, I want to say took an hour and then my line art session took an hour and that is when I had to stop. That was when the pain was too much to continue. So I got about two hours of use out of my hand doing digital work and usually I burn out after about 20 to 30 minutes. So there definitely was an improvement, though my hand did still hurt considerably by the end of it, uh, more so than it does when I paint or draw. So that was a little bit frustrating, but it did seem to work. So I'm hoping that in the future this will help make digital art more accessible to me. And as the video goes on, I will tell you guys some other hot tips for making digital art more accessible for you if you also have bad hands that hate you. Um, because I figured out some tricks while I was working on this. Uh, this is the first digital art I've done in a while that wasn't done in like Adobe Illustrator, a vector program where I was just using my mouse and a pen tool. So it was good to get back into it, but also uh, I, there's a bit of a learning curve for me. I was having to remember how to use these interfaces, find brushes I liked and things like that. So. Uh, yeah, it was a bit of a process. Uh, in addition to that, I do want to give you guys a heads up that I tried to cut out most of me moving the canvas and zooming in and out if it was for a significant period of time or more than like a few inches on the canvas because it actually makes me motion sick to watch. So I figured I'm probably not the only person with that problem and I didn't want to go back and record a voiceover and feel nauseous the whole time. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of jump cuts in this portion and just bear with me. I hope they're not too ugly or distracting. It's just I needed to not look at the screen go all zoomy on me. Oh, I just realized I didn't tell y'all what program I'm actually using here. Um, so this is Autodesk Sketchbook. It is a free program that you can get on most platforms at this point. Like you can put it on your phone or your tablet or your computer or your Mac computer. Uh, so that's nice. Um, and I prefer this program to Photoshop for coloring and sketching because uh, my Photoshop is more set up for graphic design in the workspace and I don't really know how to use a lot of the more art oriented features in Photoshop, I'll be honest. Uh, so I'm more used to this program and ended up using this for this portion and then when I came back to do the coloring, but I did my flats in Photoshop and I will explain why when we get to that portion of the video. Uh, I just can do them better over there because of the pen tool and we'll get into that. I really enjoyed, by the way, being able to select things and resize them and move them around. Uh, I missed that. I used to do digital art pretty exclusively, mostly using my iPad, uh, but I definitely missed having that feature. And I also miss being able to flip my canvas to check if my art was symmetrical or, you know, uh, proportioned correctly. So that was very nice to come back and be like, oh yeah, this is, you know, there are some benefits to this for me. Hooray. Um, and then we get into the line art where I'm like, oh, I have to draw the exact same line 15 times. Just kidding. All the time I just saved by not erasing things <laughs> has been reclaimed by the line art portion. Um, so I've mentioned a few times on this channel that I'm not much of a line art person. I don't really feel that I'm very good at it. I don't feel that it adds much to my artwork. And uh, I don't like doing it digitally, especially because it's hard, especially with my hands. This is the portion where I have to start really gripping the tool that I am using in order to get a smooth line, even though I have the line stabilizer on, but if I have it on too high of a setting, it lags so much that it's just very awkward for me to use, especially when I'm trying to get smooth, confident lines. And uh, when I have it on too low, I have to grip the pen like I'm dying. So I hear you wondering, if you are so bad at line art and it is so painful, Diana, why are you doing a line art? 
Um, and it's because I am very bad at digital painting. Uh, I don't really have a style for it at this point in my life. I haven't figured out how to do it yet. And uh, yeah, so the answer you're seeking is general incompetence. I actually didn't learn how to do any kind of lineless style until long after I had stopped doing digital art uh, and switched over to pretty much all watercolor and marker mediums, and I still don't do completely lineless work very often, if at all. I mean, technically, you could probably argue that even my quote-unquote lineless work has lines, um, but don't, because I'm very sensitive and I'll cry if you're mean to me. So anyway, <laughs> um, that is why I am making myself do a line art here. Uh, it is to make an art that is digital that doesn't look like a complete butt because if I don't do a line art on my digital art, it will look bad. Someday I hope to change that, but it's gonna be a minute. Hopefully now that I have at least a slightly better tool for doing digital art, uh, I can practice that more often without injuring myself and maybe become a digital painter too, because I really like painting and I love how digital painting looks and have always really wanted to be able to do it. It's just something that has been outside of my both physical ability and experience. Sorry about the uh, lawnmower outside. One of my neighbors I thought was done mowing his lawn and he just keeps, you know, touching it up the sides, I guess, and I'm too lazy to stop recording the voiceover, so I'm not going to. Anyway, I'm starting to run out of things to talk about for the line art step specifically, so I would like to take a moment to give you guys a word from our sponsor, Nobody. But instead of that, I want to tell you guys about a free alternative to Audible. And this is specifically for people in the United States. I don't know if this works in other places, but if you are a US listener, uh, I have good news. And if you're an international listener, you might also have this, and I just don't know about it because Americans don't know things about other countries. Um, so if you want to listen to audiobooks like Gideon the Ninth, probably, uh, and you don't want to buy an Audible subscription because they're expensive and you don't like Amazon, you can download the Overdrive app where you can listen to those same books for free with a library card. So you get a library card from your library and you can get free audiobooks and ebooks using the app Overdrive. There are a couple others too. I think I used to use Libby, uh, L-I-B-B-Y, and uh, I'll put some links in the description to those. So if you want to read books without paying Amazon and Jeffrey Bezos any money, get the Overdrive app and a library card today. Your taxes are already paying for it. Why pay for it again? Okay, I actually went and looked it up and it is available in a bunch of countries and it's you go to overdrive.com and there's a list of applications you can download by Overdrive that let you do the various things and Libby is one of them. So check out the link to that in the description. This has just been a public service announcement. I really like libraries. Anyway, so I'm getting towards the end of this line art layer here. Uh, I'm gonna come back and change the sword a bit later in the video, but I wanted to set up the last step of the line art before the video gets there because I know it's going to go too quickly for me to explain it well. So something with line art that I am decent with on paper but very bad at on digital art is line weight. And the reason I'm bad at it on digital art is specifically because it takes a while to do and it hurts. So I decided instead of going over a bunch of these lines manually, I was going to duplicate the original layer, which I have now done, and scoot out a bunch of the lines. So I'm using the lasso tool to pick up the second layer's line and then scooting it to the side a little bit because it's the same line. So I'm basically just kind of bold facing that font, <laughs> so to speak, um, in a few key areas to beef up the line art a little bit. And then I do go in and actually fix a few places by hand, but they are very small and it was a lot easier to do it this way than to do every single one of them by hand. So yeah, that's just a fun little trick that I did. And now we're in Photoshop for the flats. And let me explain why I came over here to do those. Um, so as you can maybe see, if your video is very big right now, I am using the pen tool, the curvature pen, to outline the shapes for my flat coloring layers. I had taken a few hours off by this point to go eat dinner and to do stuff. 
but I didn't want to injure my hand again doing the flats before I finished painting. So I went to Photoshop and I pulled the line tool, which I'm good at using because I make a lot of stuff in Adobe Illustrator and it's the same tool I use there. So uh, you can select areas like this by outlining the shape with the line tool and then changing it to a selection. Um, using the tab I just clicked on. It's probably in a different place for you because Photoshop's interface is different for anyone, but look up like how to change a path to a selection and you should be able to find it. And I'll try to link a tutorial in the description for that as well. I filmed this whole process, but I ended up cutting most of it out because I find it very boring to watch, but I do it the same way for every shape in the video. Uh, the same way I just did the sunglasses and hair. And that's the final product. It took about an hour to do, which is about as long as it takes me to do flats normally. And then the last step of the line art. So I came back over into sketchbook and I decided I wanted her pommel instead of being a pommel to be a little skull because Gideon the Ninth is a book about necromancy and there's a whole lot of skeletons. So I started by drawing some shapes that were bad and then I decided I was gonna draw the eyes first. Um, because the way I remember how to draw skulls now is to draw a pair of aviator shades and then fill in the rest of the skull. Um, cause the cover of the book Gideon's wearing aviator shades and she wears them in the book actually. That's another accessibility thing that makes me very happy. Gideon just has migraines canonically and I also have migraines, which is another reason digital art is hard for me or used to be. Um, I have special glasses for them now. They are anti-reflecting glasses that reduce glare that my doctor gave me. I think you can get them without a prescription, but they're not the blue light blocking glasses that you can get like for $5 on Amazon. I, I did get these from a doctor. Um, but anyway, they seem to help. And that is another thing that uh, was a barrier to me doing digital art, but that was also a barrier to me doing anything on a computer. And I work on computers for 40 hours a week, so that wasn't ideal. So I'm glad I have these now. I also couldn't go in grocery stores for a while because I was getting migraines from fluorescent lights. Anyway, back to the actual point of this video, which is talking about accessibility and digital art. I mean, I guess that was related. Um, I bet you're wondering how my little pencil holder grip was holding up at this point. Um, so it was around now that I started to realize that I had cracked the little model magic piece that I made. It does still work, but it did make it looser. I was having to readjust it more. Uh, and I had to readjust it a lot. I did eventually end up having to just turn off the functionality of one of the buttons because it kept getting hit by accident by the pencil grip. And specifically it was turning my brush into an eraser over and over again. So that was frustrating. And I eventually just went into my settings and disabled that button altogether. So it's not a perfect tool. I might try to make another one at some point. And if I do, I will make a follow-up video. Um, it did increase the comfort, but it didn't increase it to the same point as my traditional art, which I'm starting to think might just be a fool's errand. I might just need to make peace with the fact that that I will never be as comfortable physically doing digital art as I am doing traditional, and that's okay. I really like doing traditional art. I prefer how it looks. Uh, it just is a skill set that may be less accessible to me, but still possible. Just, you know, it's something I have to commit time and energy to doing as opposed to traditional art, which comes very easily for me, comparatively speaking just in terms of comfort and physical ability. But I would say this tool took digital arts pain if uh, on a scale of one to 10, if 10 is the most painful and zero is the least from being a seven on the pain scale for me to maybe like a four or a five until I was like two or three hours in. So I got a lot more time out of my hands. And for most of that time, it did hurt less until the very end when I was just really starting to get fatigued. So I think this is a workable solution, particularly for when I need to do digital art, which is fairly unusual for me anyway. Most of the time, if I need to do something on my computer, it's something I can do in Adobe Illustrator or do on my iPad, which is more comfortable to use than a computer tablet. And this applies to all computer tablets for me, by the way, I figured I would mention, I have used other tablets and I have had this problem with most, if not all of them. I think it really comes more down to the jittering of the pen and the shakiness of the lines and how tightly I have to grip my pen to avoid that. 
Uh, and on my iPad, I have tools that prevent that. Like I have a screen protector that gives me more traction and I have a little tip on my iPad pencil. So maybe I could try to figure out similar solutions for this tablet or other tablets I get in the future. I'll keep experimenting with it and let y'all know because digital is definitely a scale set I would like to invest more time into. I just have to find a way to make it take uh, less energy and less of my pain threshold. Uh, yeah, we're getting pretty close to the end of my actual coloring process here. Uh, I was just using one of the watercolor brushes that I believe comes with Sketchbook by default. And I was also using the Dream brush, which is also one of the default brushes for my sharper shading. Say that five times fast. And yeah, I like the effect overall. I don't love how the shading turned out just because I continue to struggle with figuring out an art style I like in digital. So I'm hoping now that it's a little easier to do digital art for me, I can explore it a little bit more fully and try to find out a style that I like more, or at least like approximately as much as I like my traditional styles of painting and drawing. I've thought about trying to like mimic my watercolor style uh, and I have tried to mimic my marker style before using digital mediums, but I never really like how it turns out. It always still looks like digital art to me and I can never get it to look quite as good. It looks like I'm trying to do a cheap knockoff of myself. So I think what I just, I just need to figure out how to make this medium work for me and figure out how I like to use it. I think part of the struggle for me with digital is that there are so many options that I get a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, I also have ADHD, which often goes hand in hand with fibromyalgia uh, and having tons of options is like, creativity killer for me. Uh, I work best in limited palettes, basically, in uh, all areas of life. If I don't have limits, I will freeze. Like, I'm at a Starbucks and I can't figure out what to order. So I will say that I like Sketchbook for that reason. Um, it has fewer tools available than Photoshop, so I find it less overwhelming to use as a program for art. Photoshop, I now have finally figured out where all of my graphic design tools are, but I still don't really use that program to its fullest potential, even a little bit. Like, I would say I am maybe intermediate at Photoshop use on my resume, but if you actually needed me to teach you how to do something, I would refer you to someone who knows what they're talking about. Um, so yeah, I recommend this program if you don't have Photoshop or don't like Photoshop. This one's free and it's really good and you can do almost all of the things you can do in Photoshop. I don't think it has a pen tool, which is why I switched to Photoshop for that step to do the selections. I suppose you could do your flats with the lasso tool here as well, but I found that a little bit clunky. Uh, so I ended up not doing that. Uh, the gradient tool is definitely a lot easier to use than the one in Photoshop. You can see I'm playing with that here. The one in Photoshop makes no sense to me, even though I do use it. Uh, and yeah, we're gonna come over to Photoshop for the last couple little tweaks. I wanted to add some effects to make the layers stand out from each other a little more and fuss with the colors because she looked a little ashy and desaturated because when I was doing my flats, I did it on a gray background, both to preserve my eyes and also to make sure I wasn't picking colors that were very disharmonious with each other. So now that I have colors that work well together, I can adjust them as a group without worrying about ruining the whole effect of the color palette. Uh, and if that made any sense to you, congratulations, you've successfully completed the ARG uh, and you can claim your prize via the methods that you have now unlocked. So yeah, uh, this is the artwork. I will be selling this as a print on my shop. There'll be a link in the description. I will probably be making more Gideon the Ninth art because I'm obsessed with her. And I really appreciate y'all coming on this journey with me. I hope you learned some useful tips. And if not, I hope you had a good time listening to me make bad jokes. Like and subscribe for more Bone Gremlins, and I'll see you in the next one.